Hi, this is David. Welcome to part one, topic one, risk taking a corporate governance perspective. This tutorial concerns the assigned reading by the International Finance Corporation, that's IFC, on what we would call ERM, which is an abbreviation for Enterprise Risk Management. And so there is an associated workbook, but it's only a single worksheet within a single workbook, T1.IFCERM. And it shows you the calculations that are at really at the heart of this particular reading. And it's in two parts. And that is the calculation of a weighted average cost of capital. Probably seen that before. And that weighted average cost of capital is then used as an input into calculating the net present value of a project under two different approaches. So we'll take a look at that shortly. And then you don't need the spreadsheet, of course, but if you want to take a look at the particular calculations, they, uh, they are mimicked or replicated exactly in this worksheet. And so we start with first the definition of risk. And so this reading is very specific. They put some thought into this definition and I'll remind you that it's not necessarily the case that we have a single definition of risk. Uh, we have various authors in the FRM. Some would approach risk from various angles, but this definition is consistent with what we uh, see throughout the part one and that risk, and that is that risk is the potential for the occurrence of loss. And then we're going to really emphasize the potential for the occurrence of loss because it's not going to be the realization of a loss, it's the potential for a loss. And the other important point that this reading wants to really make about that definition is that it cannot be separated from growth opportunities. And so to really illustrate that by way of metaphor, perhaps they uh, use the Chinese symbol for crisis as offering a good description or metaphor or risk because it reminds us that risk is both a threat or danger and an opportunity. And so this is thematic to the FRM in fact, or to a general approach of risk, because I would say to at least two things about that. The first that the re first reason that risk is not separate from growth is that we tend to assume, and this is traditional in finance, that excess returns require assuming some risk. If we want the risk-free rate of return, we can invest in a so-called risk-free asset. If, but if we want to do better than risk-free, which is to suggest if we want excess returns, then in a traditional view, we need to assume some risk. Why is that important? Well, because it's the underlying philosophy to 